Hi, my name is Pastor Hal York, and welcome to Truth in the Trenches. Today we're going to Proverbs chapter 6, verses 9 to 11. How long will you lie down, O sluggard? When will you arise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. Your poverty will come in like a vagabond, and your need like an armed man. Laziness. We've talked about this before several times in our Truth in the Trenches talks. But laziness is defined by some as emotional disinclination to activity or exertion despite having the ability to act or to exert oneself. You have the ability to act, but you don't. No one asks a sick person, how long will you lie down? We often encourage a sick person to lie down and get some rest. But the sluggard, the one who is healthy, able to work, to walk and get out of bed, is a good question. When are you going to get out of bed? If you read through Proverbs, you'll find that nothing good is ever said about laziness. Proverbs 20.13 says, Sleep is the defining characteristic of the sluggard. Do not love sleep or you will become poor. Open your eyes and you will be satisfied with food. For the lazy person, the sluggard, the love of sleep is pure escapism, a refusal to face the world. Proverbs 26, 14 says, As the door turns on his hinges, so does the sluggard on his bed. To the sluggard, sleep is like a drug. He craves it more and more to escape the pain of living. Laziness cast into a deep sleep, and an idle man will suffer hunger, Proverbs 19, 15 says. The father here is using the slugger to teach his son a lesson about the dangers of such actions. One writer put it this way. He says, how long will you waste your time and when will you become a better steward of it? How long will you love your comfort and when will you learn to deny yourself and put in the effort? How long will you bury your talents and when will you start using them? How long will you delay, procrastinate and squander your opportunities as if you are indifferent to the future? When will you motivate yourself to take action on what needs to be done? Poverty, it says, will come silently. That he won't see it coming. It will grow upon them and come step by step as one that travels, but without fail. It will come. And Proverbs says it comes like an armed man that is with irresistible fury. And thou art not prepared to oppose it, Clark says. At least 14 Proverbs relate idleness either explicitly or implicitly to poverty, the bitter end of the sluggard. The procrastinator believes that tasks can always be completed later. In contrast, the diligent worker anticipates the future, while the lazy person will find time, that time approaches like a thief. When it arrives, it will bring poverty, not one that comes from circumstances or misfortune, but one that results from laziness. Yes, poverty will come. It may come slowly, but it will come. And the sluggard will not be able to stop it. But the sluggard will have a thousand reasons why it's not his fault. They perceive themselves as victims of society, unfairly treated, who never catch a break. But what the person lacking motivation and the lazy person fails to realize is that the opportunity he's seeking is arriving in the form of hard work. But the lazy person is a master of deceit. But sadly, the person he's deceiving is himself. And like an armed man, poverty will come upon them. So this dad is stressing the dangers and the temptations of slothfulness throughout the book of Proverbs. My grandparents used to sing a song called Wasted Years. Wasted Years. Oh, how foolish. This will be the theme song of the lazy person. Missed opportunities. C.S. Spurgeon wrote a book called Talk to Farmers. And he talks about the sluggard's farm in one of his chapters. And I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but let me just read a paragraph. Because Spurgeon has a way of putting things that is very unique. This is what he says. Solomon's description of a slothful man. Solomon says that a sluggard is a man void of understanding. The slothful man does not think so. He puts his hands in his pockets. And you would think from his important air that he had all the Bank of England at his disposal. You can see that he is a very wise man in his own esteem, for he gives himself airs which are meant to impress you with a sense of his superior abilities. How he has come by this wisdom, it will be hard to say. He's never taken the trouble to think, 
Yet I dare not say that he jumps at his conclusions because he never does such a thing as jump. He lies down and rolls into a conclusion. Yet he knows everything and has settled all points. Meditation is too hard work for him, and learning he could never, could never endure. But to be clever by nature is his delight. He does not want to know more than he knows, for he knows enough already. And yet he knows nothing. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago, about confident ignorance. And that is one of the things that is true of the lazy person. The song of the lazy person, missed opportunities. But the greatest danger for the lazy person, obviously, is his sluggardness, his unwillingness to do the hard thing, his unwillingness to get out of bed and do something or think. But the greatest danger is when it comes to putting off coming to Christ. Too lazy to come to church, too lazy to read their Bible, too lazy to make a decision. Someday, he says, but not today. Someday, someday Christ, someday I'll get up and look for a job. But someday Christ and poverty will come as a thief in the night, too late. So may we take heed to the peril of laziness and learn as we read Proverbs about the virtues of hard work, diligence, and responsibility, self-discipline, and guarding our hearts from the temptation of laziness. The next verse in Proverbs chapter 6 tells us to go to the ant. It's small, but it's a hard worker. It looks to the future. There's going to come a time when winter comes where he can't gain food for himself. So he has to do it while he has the opportunity. He's preparing for what's coming. The lazy person has no such insight. He never thinks about the future. He just thinks about today. And he keeps turning over and over in his bed, but he never gets out of it. And poverty will come like an armed man. Not might, it will come. So where's where's your heart? Have you put off coming to Christ? Have you put off giving your life to Christ? What are you waiting for? It's, It's hard. It's a hard decision, yes. But if the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, And maybe it's your family, maybe you're in your marriage, you're lazy. This laziness is manifesting itself and your family's suffering. You're on the verge of losing a home, losing a job because you're lazy. Guard your heart. We need to get out of bed and we need to go to work. We need to do what we need to do to raise our families, to have a good marriage, and so on. But of all things, we need to come to Christ. Do not drift past the opportunity to come to Christ. Lazy people like to drift because you don't have to do anything. You just drift. And I pray if you're listening to this and you've yet to trust Christ as your Lord and Savior that you will realize that today is a day of salvation. Don't put it off. You don't want to sing, be singing at the end of your life. Wasted years, wasted years. Oh, how foolish. May this truth guide us and guard us in the trenches of life as we seek to live our lives for the glory of God and the good of others. May God bless.